Hello and welcome to another episode of the F*** Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Andrew Panton and Gavin Free, my two favorite people in the world. Sorry, Millie, but you're not listening to this anyway, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, what episode are we at? Does anybody have any idea? 121, uh, I believe. Yeah, 121. See, once, once, I, once I quit chronicling uh, year, volume, uh, et cetera, et cetera, season... Uh, I just completely lost it. I'll be honest. I was a fan of the volumes and the chapters, the years and the volumes and all that. I was, I was yeah. too, Gavin. I was too. I don't, I, I feel like th- we weren't against it as much as I didn't understand the system. I was confused a- Andrew, by it. Andrew and Eric refused. They were very, they were very against it. <laughs> uh, They're very clearly against it. They said, no, <laughs> no more, Jeff. I said, fine, fine. You know, we have no Nick and Eric today. We wore those little guys out this morning, Gavin. We went out. Uh, it was baseball's round two. How'd it go? Woo! I'm very excited to hear about this. Well, let me, you know what? I mean, I know how I think it went. Let me ask you, Gav, how do you think it went? Uh, I think you came out there, you were potentially in worse shape. You've been recently injured. Easily and, in worse shape. And uh, you cracked out more hits than you did last time. Are you serious? <laughs> he, he, I think you had a streak of about 15 hits at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, that's ridiculous. I, uh, I had a good morning, I'll say. Uh, Gavin is right, dude. Uh, I am in worse shape than last time I hit the balls. That is uh, not by design. It is the unfortunate side effect of of having uh, the jock itch and the, uh, <laughs> the, the bike falls and the vasectomy. Uh, I just haven't been able to get on my bike or do any kind of exercise all pretty much all summer. And so I came in about 10 pounds heavier and way worse. I came very close to vomiting twice. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, we. I had to. <laughs> I had to take breaks to go sit in the dugout and pour water on my head. Yeah, he had to sit in the breeze, and he was just sort of led over, <laughs> <laughs> trying not to hurl. Yeah, I was. I was very close to vomiting, very close, but I was able to hold it in. Um, yeah, and so we went to a different ballpark. This one, uh, the fence was at th- three hundred fifteen feet, so not the. I don't know, maybe two hundred. The other one was. I will say. I fucking tried my hardest. I did not hit one out of the park, uh, Damn. but I got close. Yeah, I, hit, I was, injured. I was, I was, I was pinging two seventy, uh, wow. pretty, pretty consistently. I think one of them looked pretty like two ninety ish from where I was stood. Yeah, and I think I'm, I'm like a, I'll go ahead and say it. I'm a hundred percent sure I can hit one over that fence. Uh, I, and I don't want to make excuses. A being out of shape, but B, um, that bat. I use the same bat. You know. Because the mm-hmm. only one I have, it's getting pretty gammy. It probably yeah. weighs an extra four pounds in paint, <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's got like <laughs> dirt and shit sticking off of it, and grass. It's, not, it's probably like an inch wider than it was. <laughs> it's not the it's not the best bat in the world to hit <laughs> balls with anymore. But you know, I, I, I prize consistency. Um, and then the pitching machine this time was wackadoo. I would say like Andrew, probably one out of every four pitches was a strike over the plate. Really? And, and that got pretty frustrating because I hit about 200 balls today, maybe 225, somewhere on there was my limit. And uh, and that's it. That's it. Like from this point on, we're going to do it again. We have another 250 balls. That's going to be where we do the, the that's where we get in. That's where we do the different dips of paint and Gavin okay. and, and, and Nick and Eric can hit and we can just everybody can have their own color okay. signature. And we, you know, uh, let's get a better pitching machine for that one. Let's get a better pitching. Well, yeah, sure. Now that you guys are going to hit, we'll get a better pitching machine. Because <laughs> I don't know if it came across in the videos last time, but that pitching machine is, it basically is like a, a leaf blower tube cut in half <laughs> yeah. with a spinning tire inside. And every time you drop a ball in, the tire grips it and throws the ball. But what you don't really see is that the tire is now spinning at like 30% the speed that it was before. So you can't immediately dump another ball yeah. in because it doesn't yeah, come out so- very fast. So you have to wait for it to spin up to speed and if it goes too fast and it goes too high it's a nightmare that thing so is it the same machine that you yeah, used yeah, last time it's the same and machine. was it as bad the first time or has it just the it's gotten worse it's gotten down. way worse fascinating yeah <laughs> way worse uh and it's frustrating too because like the first pitch will be uh nine feet high and then the second feet will hit hit the ground three and a half feet before the plate and then the third pitch uh, hooks a it takes a dog leg right at my crotch, <laughs> and then the fourth pitch will be a strike. <laughs> so I got I started to get so frustrated 
and I just like I stopped trying to hit dingers and I just tried because I was just getting bored of like watching pitches go by and I I, mm-hmm. I was having a lot of luck signing him like the signatures look way better this time around oh, because I awesome. was liberal with, I was Bernie Sanders with the paint dude <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was slinging everywhere and uh, so I just I was like fuck it I'm gonna swing for every single bad pitch and I was able to connect with 99 percent of them just because I wasn't trying to put it over the fence. Um, it was wow. still so much fun though. So much I fun. Uh, I didn't bring That's my big great. camera this time just because I need to use it mm-hmm. soon for other work and I don't want it yeah covered in paint or smashed. So I use my phone and now the back of my phone has a nice sort of bumpy house paint job. And there's a little bit of black oh, paint that's... on my green card, which I'm going to try and scratch off at some point. Because I'm <laughs> dumb and I left my wallet on the back of it. I've that's been uh, I've been pulling uh, black paint out of my arm hair all day. <laughs> um, except for I forgot, except for the right side, where I was like, oh, weird. There's no black paint on this side. I wonder why. And then I realized, I remembered over the weekend, uh, I or Monday for Labor Day, I grilled uh, like a really nice steak for Emily and I, mm. and. Uh, I was not paying attention to what I was doing. I was listening to a podcast or something while I was doing while I was grilling, and I squirted a little bit too much lighter <laughs> fluid, or, or, oh. <laughs> and I set off a bomb that burned <laughs> all of the hair off of my right arm. <laughs> Didn't cause any damage to the skin, <laughs> but I came back inside and I held it up to Emily and I was just like, look at this. And she was like, oh my God, do we need to go to the hospital? And I just like, I just took my hand and brushed my arm hair and it just all hit the ground in like little, little burnt nug, <laughs> like little nubbins. It was, that's really it's a clear nice. example of how Emily and I are different because if you came in like that, my first thought would be, oh my God, are the steaks okay? <laughs> well, <laughs> is I that, put the steak is on yet. <laughs> fantastic. Well, Jeff, I think you're stronger than a machine, is what we've established. You're better built than the machine used to pitch the ball. You have only improved over time when it has lessened. Here's what pisses me off about it, too. Um, I I hit a rhythm about 100 balls in when I was like, I was really, really starting to see the ball. I was making contact nine out of every 10 pitches that I swung at. And uh, and I was hitting them pretty consistently, like to about 250 to 275 dead center field. And that's also like right as I'm dialing in and I'm starting to hit my groove. That's also when my body starts to shut down uh, for lack of cardio. And mm. so like right as I was like starting to feel it, I started to feel it uh, the other way. And so <laughs> it was like a constant battle between like, man, it's like the epitome of the mind is willing, you know, but the body, yeah. the body's this fucking dickhead. Um, yeah, I. <laughs> I, I'm actually I was thinking about it on the way home. I'm actually kind of mad at myself for the alcoholism thing because if I hadn't been so distracted by booze in my 30s, I could have played so much fucking baseball. It is so much fun. And I feel so like I don't know, maybe it's just like growing up in America and watching baseball all the time and playing little league and shit, but I just feel so connected to it. Like it just feels mm-hmm. like it just like it just feels I feel good at it, you know? Like I want to do it more. Yeah. At one point after you came back for a rest, after hitting probably 80 balls, uh, you, <laughs> you it was after you were slumped over trying not to vomit, you just leant back and you were like, man, I hate this age. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to forget that I'm a fucking 47 year old dude out there doing that, you know? So <laughs> are you going to try to pursue playing baseball recreationally or do you think it's specifically the hitting part of the game you enjoy? Do you think you'd have fun in an actual game where you're on second base or whatever, just waiting? Yeah, I would love to play like Sandlot baseball. Uh, I love, okay. I, I love playing. I like to pitch. Um, I, I would love to play. I'm scared to death of playing infield. It's too, it's too much math. It's too, it's too mean. It's like too much knowing which scenario to throw to. So I mm-hmm. much prefer to play outfield. Um, but uh, where worst case scenario, you just throw the ball home. You know, you can't go wrong there. Yeah. Uh, because you know it's baseball gets stressful in the moment. It's it's all about making snap decisions and making the right snap decision based on the environment. And uh, but I I don't think so because I'm just not good at scheduling stuff now. You know I'm at the age where it's like it's hard for me to show up an appointment at an appointment or sure. to, or to want to make an appointment. And so I just like life life so gets in the way. You know every day that yeah. I just don't think it's a reality. But I'll continue to hit these baseballs as long as the audience wants autographed baseballs. I'm having s- <laughs> it is so much fun to do, and I'm so excited to get Gavin and Eric and Nick involved too. There were yeah, I think great. way more signed balls from this batch. So I think if you really? buy from this slot, you're you're more likely to get a a nice paint stain. Yeah, interesting. 
I didn't I didn't I didn't strike out a lot uh today. Um but also uh uh Blaine and Andrew showed up to help uh not you Andrew the uh, Eric's friend Andrew showed mm-hmm. up to uh to help uh catch balls and that was really appreciative too so I want to say thank you to them. Um sweet. Yeah. That's Blaine gave me sunscreen and lent me a hat. <laughs> Blaine gave Gavin <laughs> Uh, I thought he was being funny, but I don't think he was. <laughs> no, I he, think was he was being, being helpful. He knew what he was doing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he, he, he brought a tube of the most viscous sunscreen. It was like, it came out like toothpaste. And he just <laughs> was squeezing it on my hand. And it, it was like, you got enough? You need more? And he just kept squeezing it into like a big dog turd on my hand. And uh, I couldn't rub it all in. I was offering it around. And eventually I just smeared it on my shin and I just kept a mound of sunscreen on my shin for the entire day. <laughs> and like using it from my leg and stuff. Did you see him use the sunscreen, Gavin? <laughs> oh. No. I, no. I didn't either. Interesting. I didn't either. Interesting. Interesting. Colgate we'll see how you're feeling tomorrow. Right? <laughs> 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 Man, can I That's tell you guys, um, before we get off the baseball thing, I, uh-huh. uh, I, I encountered a little bit of friction with my, with my girlfriend over this for like the first time. Oh, no. Not, not bad. But like the other day, uh, she or it was actually last night. She was like, uh, "What do you got going on the rest of the week?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm getting up and I'm hitting the baseballs tomorrow morning." And she goes, "Really?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" And she's like, "You can barely walk. You just got. You're just now getting over your bike injury. Before that, it was the jock itch and the and the vasectomy, and then the jock itch before that. Like you have been, you've been a you've been a neutered physical mess." For like three months, and you're and do you remember how you felt after the last time you hit the baseballs? And I was like, I felt pretty bad. And she was like, You were fucked up. You were fucked up for three straight weeks. And I was like, Yeah. And she's like, And you're gonna do that again tomorrow. And I was like, I guess so. And she's just like, Ugh. And then, uh, and then today, I was so excited. Like I, I knew I was in worse shape, but I was thinking like I, I'm gonna stretch better. I know what to expect, so I think I'll probably fare better, right? Uh, physically, and I, and I feel, by the way, I feel fucking great right now. Um, I came home, I immediately ran a hot bath, filled it with Epsom salts, got into the bathtub and thought, I'm just going to sit here and let my muscles relax and I'll be completely okay. I looked at my phone and it said 12, 19 PM. And I thought, why does that matter to me? I don't have a face till three o'clock. Why would I care that it's, why does 12, 19 seem bad? And I was like, Ugh. so then I like slowly looked, at, hit my calendar. And sure enough, I was supposed to be at Rooster Teeth at one o'clock to do this interview show thing. And I was like, God damn it. And I had to rush out of the bath and then throw clothes on and then immediately go to work. <laughs> I, took a, I, took a, I took a 45 second bath and then immediately returned and went back to work. You now know my pain. When I, when I saw Gavin, you know, when, he, <laughs> yeah. when he beat the Halo time, you can now relate to the sadness of realizing you have to get out immediately as soon as you're getting in. Absolutely, dude. It's I, crushing. I, I feel your pain. It sucks. What's kind of interesting about all the baseballs we hit is that I'm pretty sure some of them were hit while the Queen was alive and some of them were hit after she died. <laughs> like That's exactly what we were doing, I think, the moment Queen Elizabeth died. Yeah, that- well, uh, my condolences uh, to like uh, honest condolences to to everybody uh, affected uh, by the Queen's death. That's a very very sad event and um, hell of a life. I, of I, life. I read a Incredible. stat today and I, I texted to you and Eric, Jeff, that uh, the Queen has the Queen was alive for thirty percent of all the presidents. She was the Queen. Yeah, isn't that crazy? She and was she- the Queen during the presidential, I guess, fourteen different presidents. <laughs> Let's say thirty percent of our country, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't shake out that way because of like how many terms a president had, but yeah. But still, it's roughly. And Harry S. Truman, who only exists in history books, distantly exists in history books to me, was the president when she uh, took over the monarchy. That is insane. Yeah, is Winston insane. Churchill was the prime minister when she became queen, and then she just put in the newest prime minister that just happened this week. And those two people were born a hundred and one years apart. Those two prime ministers. That's, That's crazy. she also she also uh, presided over fifteen prime ministers. If I if I survived for thirty percent of the presidencies, fifteen <laughs> prime ministers, but not the Game of Thrones books finishing, I would be so fucking mad. <laughs> I would be livid. It'd be well, so frustrating. 
<laughs> she she was still born like sixty years before the first Game of Thrones book. Surely. No, I understand, but it's just uh, they're taking forever. They're taking a long book. If I was a Game of Thrones fan, I don't know if she read the books. I, I don't know what she was into from a, a literary perspective, but I'd be like, "What are you doing?" Like, I get it's tough, but be so frustrating. I got news for you. I think we're all gonna be frustrated. I don't think <laughs> that's. I don't think JJ or George R. R. Martin. I said JJ Martin. I don't <laughs> think George R. R. Martin is in any danger of finishing those last two books anytime soon. And he, uh, let's just say he hasn't. He hasn't lived as healthy a life as the Queen did. I suspect. How old is he? He has to be. He's got to be in his sixties or seventies, right? I'd assume seventies. Yeah. But I, I just don't it. think there's any need for him to finish. I just don't. If I was him, I don't know why I would finish. That's a weird thing. I guess it's we, not going to please everyone. People are going to be annoyed. He's seventy-three. And yeah, he's he's basically made something so successful that people are annoyed at him that it's not finished. Yet. I disagree. I think that it will please. I think that the books will please everybody because here's the deal: the t- the people that love Game of Thrones, the TV show, aren't necessarily reading the books. And but everybody who reads the book, I don't know anybody who's read the books who didn't like them. Mm. Mm. I wonder how close the ending of the show matches with what he planned on doing. Very different. Interesting. Yeah, supposedly okay. very different. And that's part of... Uh, Maybe part he of was what... thinking of doing it the way the show did it and then just thought... Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's, <laughs> it's such a weird scenario. Yeah, it's a great... It's, it's, it's a free A-B testing, right? They throw it out there. Yeah, it's, like, Ugh. it's like putting your book in I'll, early access. Guess I'll do something different with Clegane then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a clip. You have a clip. Oh no! Got a clip. Gavin has a clip. Oh, I was informed of this yesterday, and I've decided to not be concerned. Because last time I went on the aggressive, and it actually helped me. I don't remember what the clip was, but it's the first time that it wasn't directed at me. So this time, I'm just gonna let it happen. I'm not worried about it. I haven't planned anything. What's your clip, Gavin? Uh, This is a clip from an episode two weeks ago, September 2022. Previously, my chair had been broken for months, and I continued to use it out of the hope that it would completely collapse while we were recording uh, at one point. It finally it hit its last legs last night. I ate shit, and I was so disappointed that it was not on the show. I had been hoping for it. So this was it. after you talked about it breaking last time this has happened? Yes, this was, that was after, it was broken but I was still making it work, and now I have to go buy a new chair. Because so I when, cannot. When did it dump you off? It dumped me yesterday. Uh, okay. Um, September 2021. Uh, yesterday, my chair broke. I've been <laughs> using a broken desk chair since before this podcast started. And my dream was that it would break while we were recording. That was the goal. <laughs> Did I tell the same waiting. story back to back? And uh, yesterday I dropped something and I, I went, I bent down to pick it up while the chair and the chair <laughs> broke. Finally, it was the end. Dumped it on the floor. <laughs> and then obviously we've got. <laughs> what had happened. He's like, well, uh, you know, we'll just, we'll figure it out. We'll see, let's, let's see what happens. I move like an inch and the chair shatters. It just falls <laughs> fall over. That last one's from the 4th of July party. I like okay. the fact that you are a, a serial chair breaker. Almost, <laughs> almost once a year now, we get a, ch- a story. Like the, the one that you told last week, that surely wasn't oh, the same chair. As that the was one- a different chair story. It just happened very similarly. Both in, se- like, right around the same time. Like, it's about every yeah. September. That's fascinating. Yeah, September 2022, September 2021, and then in November 2020, you told the, uh, the 4th of July one. But I think you talked recently about how your chair was breaking and you hoped it was going to break it. How many chairs have you broken? <laughs> I've broken three chairs. You've just that's, documented that's all, every, three chairs. all three chairs that broke. So how <laughs> I don't know if I told this story in the podcast. How the last one I had broke, why it got broken was that there, so it has armrests on it that like go up and down. And it was a time in which I had really hurt like I was dealing with an ankle issue that was really bad. And so my bed is level with my chair. And so I would roll out of the chair into the bed and then roll out of the bed onto the chair. So I'd go back and forth. I rolled onto the bed, forgetting to raise the armrest. And I took the whole chair down with me. (laughs) And that is what initially (laughs) fucked that chair up. Because I took it, I landed on it on its side. 
and then it was chair three that was chair three yeah so it was what was was the issue with chair two because chair two dumped you off the day before recording as well chair two i owned for like a decade and it just progressively broke over okay it was just a natural failing of it the the chair three had only a one year lifespan essentially (laughs) like almost a perfect year and it's ever since that fall it could never fully recover (laughs) And then I partially broke it a second time, sort of in a similar way to the second chair, where the front was tilted the entire time. Uh, and then it just, it finally gave when I, I, I went into the Tony Hawk grind mode, trying to pick something up <laughs> off the floor. I, that was, that was wild. I'm guy. so excited for next year's chair story. I can't, I don't, I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> no, well, I don't I, want any more chair stories. I have a question here. Gavin, are you saying that you've been using the same chair this entire, the entirety of this podcast? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I got this chair in 2016, I think. How many chairs have you gone through? I'm on my third chair. He's on, Jeff's on the third chair. What about you? I, the others didn't break, but like, well, one of them broke. The first one was like half, you know how like, uh, like the hydraulics break on a chair and it won't stay up anymore. It just like slowly yes. sinks down. I got rid of yes. one of those <laughs> and then I got a second chair and it was just uncomfortable. So now I'm on my third, maybe my fourth chair, honestly. I feel like, uh, I feel like it's a, this is a revolving chair podcast. It is. Yeah, that was I didn't mention it either. That was one of my favorite things that broke on once I went into the Tony Hawk, like before that, when it was really broken, but not fully dead. The hydraulics broke on it. So every time I'd get off of it, it would slowly raise to its highest point and it would (laughs) shoot down whenever I'd sit on it. It was fantastic. It's a lot of fun. I'm sad that that chair's dead. Uh, I think we should get you a chair that will last. Maybe a custom chair. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not opposed to that idea at all. I'm fine with this chair right now. I'll get a year out of this, ideally, and then maybe... We so is this a new one you've got now? Yes, it is. Well, relatively now. I guess whenever okay. the last one broke since that point. Yeah. There is something I want to talk about that you just reminded me of. Okay. I saw a thing. I, I saw... as It was posted, I believe, on the subreddit. There's a TikTok of a cup that got invented. They took some of the Gerpler technology. What? It's a real thing. I wish I could find, you know how in my design document, I pitched the idea of like a, a deck a cards when you fan it out, like that would be the top that you close. There's a cup that does that. Let me see if I can find the post. Yeah, I need to, I need visuals. I'm confused if this is the thing that I came up with and someone else also came up with and created, or if I saw it before, I don't remember how I came to that point of designing the Gerpler. Let's see if it's on the subreddit or actually I know where I can find it. But it's if you remember, like my cup, ridiculous design. It had the parachute. It had the the wings on the side of it. But and wheels it, didn't it as well. It had wheels. Yeah, just if you want to slide it down. Uh, but the main one of the main points of design was I wanted a top that you could fan to close, so it could yeah. be open or close. So in the event that you're worried it would it would spill. Uh, one second here. Ba-ba-ba-ba. Um, have you ever broken a chair, Kevin? Uh, oh, I must have broken one at work at some point. I would imagine you've broken everything breakable at work. Uh, well, I mean, Jeremy broke my desk. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Hey, while you're looking for this, can I just say, yeah. uh, on a whim, I looked on the store just before we started recording. Do you know what, st- what we still have more of that's still in stock? Uh, grow tubes? Grow tubes. Grow tubes. Yeah. We have done a phenomenally piss poor job of telling <laughs> oh, people terrible. that the grown tubes are in the store. I'm sure by the time you hear this, they'll be gone. But they've been in the store for like three weeks and nobody has cared or noticed. We haven't posted a single time? I think we might have posted once, like right when they hit. <laughs> uh, but we certainly haven't talked about it and promoted it like we do. Like if we could sell a thousand bat knobs and a thousand... Uh, uh, pink porta potty tiki mugs. I would think we could sell. I think the grown tubes are arguably the grown tubes are great. Were arguably more desired, uh, for sure, and uh, than those other two items. And we just uh, had, we've had like six hundred of them just like sitting there collecting dust. And I just I can't believe uh, I can't believe we've done. It's I'll I'll take the blame for it. It's all my fault. Well, I have fu- <laughs> I have fucked up this. Uh, I in my head because they were at RTX. Uh, and you could buy them yeah. at our convention, then they had already been out and they had already existed. And I just have not been able to f- flip that switch in my head. Well, it's been, it, it kind of came at an unfortunate time where they were available in our store 
around the same time we were filming yeah. Survive Block Island Meltdown. Yeah, that's so true. So we're all busy doing something else, and then by the time... Like, that was such a, a, an event to get through that by the time we finished that, it just sort of, I think, slipped all of our minds for different reasons. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope we do a better job with this round of baseballs because we put some work into them today. I'm sure we will. And I, it sounds like all of the issues have been sorted out with the store as far as release time goes. Yes, I think so. I think so. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Here we go. Yeah, so here's the, the, the cup. So you can see it has a twist Oh, it's top. like a sphincter lid. Oh! Yeah, you twist it and you seal it. And it's That's the, the exact- coolest thing I've ever seen. Well, that was part of my design. You get the fanning, you twist it, you can seal it. And Drew, you're so, brilliant. I think I might be a little, like maybe 10% cup genius. I, I don't oh, think the other it things are practical. The, if it's, oh, if it's on the straw. You could tighten the straw. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even, that's an innovation I did not consider. But it just, <laughs> it's weird to come up with something and then see it actually executed. In a way that is better than you could have imagined, but it's still like the base idea is the same. I think you need to. Do we still have access to online law firms? I think that we should hire. <laughs> We're gonna <laughs> hire our lawyer to sue the fuck out of TikTok. <laughs> sue TikTok for it. yeah, specifically the whole system. What has happened with the Gerpler? Why we have we sold those yet? Just talking no. about merch stuff. I'm excited. We're for getting them. We're getting them made. They're being made. I don't know what the okay. status of them is, but uh, I feel like it's just the same thing we always say: supply chain. You know, yeah. it's just like shit's totally. harder to get uh, get manufactured. Um, but yeah, we're definitely making Gerplers, and I anticipate the Gerpler being hopefully the all time like best received, best best sold item uh, the f- base has because I I really do think that that's a that's a I pretty sweet spot that Gerpler. I think it's too useful. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got them in our like, hands yet, Kevin. I feel like <laughs> face nails useless crap, like a oh, bat yeah. knob. Oh, 100%. What are you do with that? What if we drill a hole in the bottom of every Gerpler? <laughs> no. No, I'm excited about using the Gerpler. <laughs> you have to pay a monthly subscription for the plug to seal the hole. I feel like it will be fucked up in a way that we did not anticipate. I, oh, I think that's sure. locked in. Like there will be some issue with it. It'll it'll be spelled right. It'll be like grupple or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, just to round out baseballs, I just want to say I'm impressed, Jeff. You did a great job. It sounds like I'm excited oh. to see the products released. I honestly thought that you would have had a drop off because I've never done the baseball things. But as somebody who did burgers multiple times <laughs> every time i did burgers i felt like i lost a little bit of myself and each attempt after was a step back or it was more of a struggle even if i did better like it just was a more difficult thing to get through so the fact that you have only improved in your hitting even though your body is in a worse state oh yeah it's truly impressive well i thanks man and i i appreciate it i will admit that i was a, a bit afraid that i i I overperformed because it was in front of my girlfriend and her parents mm. the first time, you know, which uh, a lot of <laughs> lot lot of pressure. <laughs> I could have like that could have like her parents could have walked away and been like, you you got to dump this dude. He's fucking he can't hit a, <laughs> he can't hit a forty five mile an hour ball to save his life. And we had no beans better. waiting for us this time. That's yeah, true. no beans this time either. So it was a, it was affirming uh, to get the feeling that it wasn't beginner's luck. I I, I appreciate that. This ad is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Have a pack scheduled this fall? HelloFresh's meals covered with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items, all delivered to your door. Now more than ever, we're all looking for ways to save money. In fact, HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout and is even cheaper than grocery shopping too. HelloFresh is here to make your hectic weeknights a little easier and a lot more delicious. Their quick and easy meals, including 20-minute meals, low prep, and easy cleanup options, take the stress out of mealtime with time-saving, no-fuss recipes ready in a snap. I talk about it every time. I love HelloFresh. It's a fantastic product. So many delicious recipes. Regardless of how experienced you are in cooking, it's great for you. It's just fantastic. I love the service. I'd recommend it to anyone. So go to HelloFresh.com slash face 65 and use code FACE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That is HelloFresh.com slash FACE65 
and use code FACE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Say it one more time. HelloFresh.com slash FACE65 and use code FACE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Thank you. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business, so upstart, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. Believe me, this podcast started out selling t-shirts, and today, we're selling grown tubes. And we're not stopping there because success is a million milestones on a forever evolving path. Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Synchronize your online and in-person sales. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is possibility powered by Shopify. So go to shopify.com slash face, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash face right now. Shopify.com slash face. Isn't it crazy that in 2022 we have high speed internet, celebrities going to space, and electric cars, and yet people are still cleaning their bums the way our Victorian brothers and sisters did with toilet paper? Step into the 21st century and upgrade your bathroom routine and start washing your bum with Hello Tushy bidets because smearing your business around with toilet paper is so 100 years ago. Hello Tushy is a fantastic product. It elevated my bathroom in so many ways. It's easy to install. It's fantastic. So stop spreading your business around your butthole with toilet paper. Start washing with Hello Tushy bidets. The Hello Tushy bidet attachment washes your bum with fresh water for a way better clean than toilet paper. Simply spray and pat dry. It attaches to your existing toilet. No electrician or plumber needed. Installs in less than eight minutes. Cuts down your TP use by 80%, saving money and paper waste. Make the restroom your best room with the complete Tushy system, including the Tushy bidet attachment, ottoman, and toilet brush. Hello Tushy has cleaned over 1 million happy bumps. Join them and take care of your business the cleaner way. We want all of our listeners to have clean bumps. Visit hellotushy.com face to get 10% off plus free shipping right now. Tag us and at Hello Tushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean butt with you. That's HelloTushy.com slash face for 10% off. Um, do you do you guys have anything else? Because I had one other thing. I have one small thing, but you, you could do yours first. No, you do your small thing. Well, I okay. I just I need to pull something for it. So if you want to go first. Okay. Uh, so I feel like everybody was excited about uh was really excited about the in cap contest mm -hmm. and there was a lot of potential a lot of possibility and i thought it was a clever uh, a clever contest and i uh i feel like it had been a while since we'd had something like that and i think maybe that's part of part of what was so exciting about it uh having a good good old face uh, competition going on and then it kind of fell flat because it turns out that Canada has wider in caps than aisles, <laughs> right? Like, like it would have been harder for yeah. you to, for, to eat off the aisles and it ignore the in caps because <laughs> all the useful shit is there. Yeah, uh, which also kind of makes sense if you think about it. You go into a grocery store, your your in caps are where all the important shit uh, is, is in Canada. You don't even have to go down the aisles. So fuck them. Uh, it's just where all the bad cereal is, I guess. Uh, but I want to. I want to. I, I, in the spirit of competition, I wanted to come up with something else that we could do. And I was having a conversation with Emily and she reminded me uh, of, of an, actually I was reminded of an old, uh, RVB bit, um, that like a joke, throwaway joke in RVB about Griff eating, uh, based on the alphabet. And then Emily was like, doesn't Andrew have, uh, ha has that, uh, like bingo thing on his desk, right? Mm hmm. Do you still have the bingo machine where you can uh, I do. pull balls yeah, up? Yeah, in my closet. Here's what I propose. What if we did a contest? And it could be one of us. It could be all three of us. I like the idea of it not being me. But 
uh, <laughs> where we put 26 balls, numbered 1 through 26, into your bingo thing, okay. and you pull one out. And whatever number you pull out, there's a letter associated with that number, uh, A through Z, right? <laughs> so you pull out okay. the equivalent of the letter L. Now, mm-hmm. for the next week, you can only eat food that begins with the letter L. Oh, okay. God. You could have some bad weeks. You could have a lot of baked Z. So what's the... <laughs> The goal would be to go through all 26, so this would be a 26 week thing. No, the goal would just be like the, the, it's just the, it's just a random way to pick a letter. So we could just okay. potentially pick three numbers and we'll each take one and that's our food for the week. Yeah, potentially like Gavin, you could get B and you could be like, "Oh, it's burgers all week for Gavin." And and oh, I B could would get be X. the best. <laughs> I could get X and have to repull because there's no food that's mm. X. Uh, you know, you could get C and be like, "I guess I'm eating a lot of chicken. coconuts and chicken," you know? Cheese. Uh, D, it's like, uh, I hope I like dumplings. Uh, a, but you, you were just, you're confined to anything that starts with that letter. Okay. So just let, let's do an important qualifier here. Okay. If I pull C, could I have, gr- can I have grilled chicken or is that a G? Yeah. I think uh, C is chicken. Okay. So yeah. any variation of it. So if I had teriyaki chicken, that's still just chicken. The T yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Is that too easy there? If you get a C, it's pretty fucking easy. It is pretty easy. C is an easy one. (laughs) What are you going to do with an N? Uh, mm. It's a lot of nigiri. What if... Hmm. I think this is a fun idea. We could almost... New potatoes. There you go. You can have... (laughs) Yeah, sure. You can have nugs. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you can. I don't think think that counts. (laughs) I really like this idea... I know you don't. You ideally didn't want to be involved with, with this, Jeff. But I think it would be fun if we each had the poll. Like, no, I agree. Like I said. agree. And what uh, if we just do it for the weekend? This weekend? No, weekend is too easy. I think a full week. Okay. I think, and this is a thing that we could come back to in the future. Yeah, I think like the next time we record, we pull our numbers. I and love then between that, that recording and the next one. We uh, we I show yeah, all the a, pictures of all the food. A fantastic yeah. idea. Yeah. Do we want to do a thing where we pick what letters are in the rotation? Each of us? I think it's got to be all of them. You want to put all the letters in? I'm just, I like the idea of potentially us picking, like, oh, I really want P. Pizza, I could live off of pizza easily. That'd be a great letter to have. If I put it in wanting it for myself, but then Gavin pulls P. There's something now that's there a, do you are, are you saying that we should have the ability to eliminate letters, like, all uh, like, yeah. like Rainbow Six Siege? Like you're like no nobody nobody can play Tachanka this game. Uh, we voted against it. Like you can, yeah, can, like that that kind of idea, or it could just be all of them. I, I just think there's a lot of choice we can make as far as how we select these letters and if we want, because nobody wants like an X. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there's I found a list of 19 foods that start with the letter X. Oh well, there you go. What is one of them? Zalapa punch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Xanthan gum. Oh, Xanthan oh, gum. Yeah, my favorite. Uh, oh, Xavier soup. Oh, okay. I love an Xavier soup. Soup combines dumplings with chicken stock. That actually making doesn't a hearty sound bad. and simple meal. That's great. Yeah, Xavier that's steak. Great. What's that? Dumplings and steak. <laughs> steak <laughs> topped with Worcestershire sauce, asparagus spears, Swiss cheese, and olive oil. That's mm. less appealing, but I, that might be okay. Xiaomi? Uh, that's like a lot of Chinese food. Dried okay. shrimp that have been sun dried and shrunk to the size of a thumbnail. The shrimp are added to a variety of Asian dishes. And, okay, there's some stuff out there. If we were able to do it, I'm gonna let you guys know now. I'm banning like B or C. I'm gonna ban the most common letters if we do the banning. Otherwise, uh, I say we just do the 26 letters. Okay. Do so. Do we want to do full alphabet, or do we want to do a thing where we we pick letters to be in the hopper? I think full I guess, alphabet. I don't know. I have no I idea. Think we, I think I think full alphabet. Full alphabet? How, okay. uh, how is this a food? Xylitol is a chemical compound used in many <laughs> foods, blah, blah, blah. It can be consumed by humans. It's highly toxic to dogs. You can't just have a cup of xylitol. <laughs> well, you, it sounds like you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds terrible. <laughs> well, let's xylitol? just fucking pray nobody gets Z. But like, Z-Rex. I don't even know. Like food, yeah. Foods that begin with U. What, what can you have? Uh... uh what about, so it has to be the food name. It can't be a restaurant, right? So if I, if I thought of a U place, I couldn't eat anything from there. It Unagi. Just has to be food. Unagi's good. I That's mean, good I, 
Oh god, this is brutal. Uh does not get a U. <laughs> <laughs> you get to eat something called ugly fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should have the whole alphabet in there and you get what you get. Some people might get very lucky. Some yeah. Now, might get screwed. okay, so a variation of this, because let's say, as I said, if I get pee, I could easily eat pizza every day of every I could go a month on pizza. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you use, is there like a cap on how many days you can use a letter for? Like if you put P down, is it worth two days of the week and then you have to switch to something else? No, I think that overcomplicates it. Well, we're drawing. I, I think it's already kind of complicated. Like we're drawing, we're drawing balls for letters, and but that's fair. I just, I just feel like it'll be because that was the problem with the end caps is that it wasn't funny because it was easy. If we all have one easy letter, then I just that feel makes like, it funnier though. If someone gets a B and someone gets a Q, yeah. Like if 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 Gavin gets P for pizza and I get B for burgers and Andrew gets Q. And he's That's eating quince. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what about this? Whale eggs. Let, let's simplify this. You have to eat something that is from each letter. You have to use all your letters within the week. What do you mean? If we all, we, well, we're pulling three letters each, right? No, I thought we were only pulling one letter. Are we only Why pulling, we pulling one letter? We're pulling oh. three letters total. We each get one Because there's three Got letters. it. I thought we were yeah. each pulling. That's where the confusion was. I thought we were each pulling <laughs> oh, three yeah, letters. Because yeah. so when you have, said it was already confusing, I was like, I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I had worked this in a different. I thought we we're going to pull like three letters each, and then you'd have a choice between those letters each day of what you can use. See, because I thought it would be like a tension thing where, oh, fuck, I pulled a Z in the first round. I'm begging for like a B. Give me a C in round two. That's what I thought in my head. Not that we each uh, only have one to work with. I got it. Okay. <laughs> I think one is funny. I think one is funny, I think too. One is funny too. Unless and by the way, we, this is so affirming because I'm with Gavin. I'm like, is this complicated? I must be like a <laughs> no. rocket scientist. Yeah, I'm really not numbers? having trouble. <laughs> 26 less? What? <laughs> no, it was not. I think I heard what you said, created a completely different, more convoluted <laughs> game in my head, and then was continuing off of that premise. It's very straightforward what you're saying. So we just have to apply. So will A be one? One A, two B, yeah, three C. Yeah, I think C. you just, I think like okay. that, yeah. Got it. That'll 26 be, okay, is I'll, Z. Uh, yeah. I'll get that set up for next time we record. And we'll use the English alphabet. That'll make the most sense. Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys think of an experience that was cool? but was completely lost on you. It would be cool to a lot of other people, but you were like the wrong person to experience it. Oh, I've mm. probably had a lot of those. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of, hmm, like impressive. Are you thinking like you went vacationing somewhere or you saw like some, I feel like well, it's I was landmarks. Thinking, for me recently, I was just thinking, I was trying to remember like all the stuff I've done in the last 10 years because I hit, uh, 10 years at Rooster Teeth. I was like, man, we did a lot of stuff in that time. Mm -hmm. And like our MLB 2012 video, which was, I think the first let's play I was in after I came back mm. was, I, I looked at it and it was, you know, like 2 million views or something. And it just literally said 10 years ago, like not nine. It was like passed over to 10. I was like, Jesus. And I was thinking of some of the other stuff I did. And, uh, was looking back through my phone. I was like, oh wow. Yeah. I went to, uh, I went to like a late night talk show. And I remember before, like after I first moved here, I was watching more like talk show content. I'd, I'd see it mm -hmm. pop up on YouTube more. I'd be like, and I was always confused. I always got Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel mixed up. And I, I just could never picture the right one in my head for, for, for the longest time. And then I remembered I went, <laughs> I went to the recording of one and I don't remember which Jimmy it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I've been to one. Or was it? The, what, what are the names of the shows? The Late Show? Or the, what's the other one? Uh, I have no the, idea what the, their the, actual titles are. The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon or, uh, I don't know, the Jimmy Kimmel Show, I think is what yeah. it's called. Yeah, and I just remember thinking like, man, I, I used to get them mixed up. And now I can picture them in my head better. But I, I know that I went to see a recording and I have absolutely no idea which one it was. <laughs> and I'm just thinking like, that, would, that, that was an experience wasted on me. Like, it was a cool experience, but it, I just took nothing away from it. Like, I don't even know who I... <laughs> Who I was seeing, and I was kind of embarrassed that I went, and that's the experience I've come away with. Just wasted on me. Hmm. I would wager that like half of the video game shit I've been to, uh, like premieres or like of launch events and stuff, it's just like 
at some point they just kind of like I don't know they just kind of all are the same thing and then you're like this would probably be a really cool like E3 like after yeah. the the second time you go to E3 you're like man this would be a lot of fun for somebody to come in my place who hasn't been before because it's already like wearing thin pretty quickly with me you know yeah um, and there's definitely been some experiences for me where my cool experience was like an introduction to that game or to that mm-hmm. genre and I'm not a fan of it at the time. And then because of that experience, I'll look into it and I'll get really into it and I'll become a fan of the thing that I was at before I was a fan. And I'm like, damn, now I would ask all these different questions. Yeah. You've experienced stuff in the wrong order sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I have that I have that with bands a lot. Or I did, used to. I don't go to shows anymore. But I would like see a band and not know who they were or have heard of them but not be into them. Like there's this band I really like now. One of my favorite bands in my life. This band called Hot Water Music. And I saw them play live and they the lead singer got, well, there's two lead singers, but one of them got so fucking drunk three songs in that he had to sit on the ground and prop himself up on a, like a pole <laughs> to continue singing. And I was like, this is fucking dog shit. And these guys suck. And then six months later, I was the biggest fan of that band ever. And there's been a lot of the, a lot of those where it's like, I wish I could see them again and, and know the lyrics and to the songs and appreciate them, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to, uh, I'm sure I've had a lot of those. Nothing comes to mind. I've had times where maybe I didn't understand the value of the experience necessarily. Yeah, exactly. So like I had one where it was back when I was just doing Achievement Hunter stuff behind the scenes. I went through a phase where I was trying to get early game copies for the office. And I had developed a contact at Sony and kind of became friends with them like very that's friends is a strong word but we communicated and was friendly and then i got an email randomly saying that i was invited to playstation's behind the scenes e3 showcase that year and i had no plans on going to e3 it was back when rooster teeth would go to e3 and so i forwarded it forwarded it to trevor i believe i i don't remember who i sent it i sent it to someone i was like hey I got invited to this thing. Do you want, like, do we want to cover this? Does somebody in the office want to go in my place? Because we have an invite. I just can't. I'm obviously not going. And it was like, yeah, sure. Well, we could reach out to them. So then I emailed the PR person back at Sony. And the vibe I got was very much like, no, we don't just give these away. We can't just, no, you can't just give your invite to somebody else. Like, I think they (laughs) took it as like this very uh, prestigious, like exciting thing to be part of that you would see these games. And so for me to write back, cool, can I give this to somebody else? They were not thrilled with that response. And I never got a reply back on, it was essentially just, yeah, we do not, like we're going to have to talk about if we're okay with this. And I never heard past that point. But that is an experience where I just I thought it was like sort of an, an open invite type thing. And I think it was more behind closed doors than I realized. Companies that value themselves very highly are, are incredibly easy to piss off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Something I've learned>. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is very true. I have pissed off a few companies in my day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely true. Hey, I realized something that we didn't talk about yet that we probably should fucking talk about. It mm. just completely slipped my mind. Uh, we had our first office day. Oh, yeah. We oh, did. Yeah. We, we had an notes. office day. I to mention that. Yeah. And, we, and it was wildly successful, I thought. I thought it was a lot of fun. I didn't really honestly know what to expect going into it. I'm Same. excited for the next one because I feel like I have a better idea for it and uh, I can plan more accordingly. Yeah, so the, like the way it worked is we, you know, I had this idea, I presented it to y'all, y'all loved it. Eric took it to Face Jam, another podcast on the network. They did it first and then bragged constantly about how successful it was and how they came up with a bunch of new shows. And so, but what I thought put a lot of pressure on us. Uh, oh, definitely, a hundred percent. And I, I'm sure nobody else on on Earth felt the pressure, but us, the no. three of us. And probably, probably Gavin didn't feel it at all, but I certainly did. I'm like, these motherfuckers <laughs> oh. took our idea and they're going to do it better than us? No, now we got we to gotta outperform. I just think you're a cooler customer. I don't think you're affected by stuff. I'm so, I'm so nervous about the show. Did I tell you about the freak out I had a couple of weeks ago? No. <laughs> no. You know, like when you, when you have a little bit of anxiety and you wake up from something that usually you'd be able to fall back asleep to, but instead yeah. Yeah. your brain just starts thinking in insane loops. I woke up extremely worried about how I couldn't put my finger on the fact that this show, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why this show works. <laughs> I was like, we're making it and it's good. And I don't know how we're doing it. 
<laughs> I, was just freak- I was just freaking out because I couldn't like put it into words. Like, what what's working about it? Like, what are the pitfalls to avoid? How, like, when is it going to become shit and like people don't like it anymore? I can't believe it's still all right. I was just freaking out. Oh man! Well, oh, I was terrible. I love how passionate you are about this this uh, show, and um, I uh, I share your trepidation and your fears. I constantly, constantly uh, am nervous about about face. Uh, it really does feel like somehow we captured lightning in a bottle. And I honestly, it's best just not to think about it. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> yeah. If at all possible. Yeah. Um, but I, but the, the, to go back, to, I, I certainly wasn't trying to insult you in any way that you don't care about face. I just feel like you're <laughs> you're just a cooler customer. You're more unflappable. You know, like you're harder to get under your skin about this kind of stuff. You know what it felt like to me, Jeff? When, What's that? With the Eric thing in the face. It would be like if we had just invented basketball and he immediately showed us Steph Curry. As for like what we had to compete against. It's like we just had this basic idea of, yeah. of how this could work and that it might be beneficial. And immediate, like, oh yeah, no, we yeah. did amazing. We did all these amazing things with He's it. He's like, yeah, I really liked it. The whole idea where no you pressure. put the ball in the basket. Here's a windmill yeah. dunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're uh, trying to staple the hoop to the backboard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're trying to like how do you make a how do you make a ball out of paper? Uh <laughs> So, but let's run through it. So we had it, and um, I felt very good about it. I, I, we agreed to be at work at a certain time, and then we zoomed in uh, uh, Andrew. I got there a little early. I grabbed a whiteboard, and first off, by, by the way, there's some there, there, there's there was some subtle uh, whiteboard aggression going on that I I, I feel like I got to call out. We well, were you at- talked about it in uh, sausage talk. <laughs> Oh yeah, well that never mind. I won't talk about it because you'll have to listen to sausage talk. We should probably talk about what that is. So uh, grab the whiteboard, wrote down a bunch of ideas for like merch and thought starters and just like directions we want to go. Things things that are like like dangling shit that's dangling out there that we need to like tie a bow on and figure out. And then everybody came in and we sat around. Well, first off, Gavin showed up a little later. Eric and Andrew and I had the funniest conversation. I've ever had. I don't remember what it was, but I just remember thinking like, we got to stop talking because this is immediately content. I, <laughs> I remember what it is. I actually have it in my notes for a thing to talk about because it's a, it's a topic that I've had. You you and Eric unknowingly put a whole different angle on a, th- a thought I previously had that I've talked to Gavin about. I feel like being able to see a place, and this kind of sounds counterproductive, but being able to see a place makes me want to visit it more than if we were in a time period in which that thing would just have to be described. And my example of this is, you know, that place in Greece where it's like all the, the white houses and like the blue roofs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like to see yeah. that visually beautiful. If you met somebody who traveled all that way, let's say they, they had to like take a boat like this is planes, maybe not around in a world in which travel is difficult. They went there, came back, and tried to explain why you needed to go. There's no way they could sell me on it. Yeah, yeah white yeah. houses and blue. Ro- I could do that. Like I could, I could just paint my house that way. <laughs> there's, there, there's nothing impressive about that. So I was gonna. It made me wonder how far would I be willing to travel for something like that? And honestly, probably not more than four blocks. I wouldn't go further. <laughs> it's gonna take a lot. If you just describe a landmark to me, it's going to be very difficult for me to be willing to leave my city to but see it. But what about this? What about this? Just, there was ahead. a, maybe, okay, so when, <laughs> when Jeff and I were in Belgium, we went through an alleyway that was the best smelling alleyway we'd ever smelt. And it was Honor. probably some waffles. Uh, this is like an old story from the old podcast. How far would you travel to smell the best alleyway that you've ever smelt? I've, I've had you some would probably smells like in my blocks. life. I've got it. No, I don't know about that. Food is definitely more of a needle mover for me, 100%. But I'm thinking like it smells pretty goddamn good outside my hubby's bagel sometimes. Like I don't I don't feel like I'm like you got that. good. You got good smells. I feel like I got good smells in my area. I don't I'm telling you, this would blow it out of the water. Yeah, he's not kidding, dude. Like. I think I still think about it sometimes uh, <laughs> without hyperbole, like not being silly. It was like it was unreal. And it might have been like. It might have been like the most satisfied I've ever been in my life in a moment was in that alleyway, just really? looking left and looking right. And it smelled just as good in both directions. And I can't even put into <laughs> words the smell of this is like old world mixed with waffle mixed with whatever the fuck else is in Belgium. It was like, it was, it was, I would fly there again just to go to that alleyway. 
I feel like my heart could smell it. Yeah. 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 You weren't even smelling it with your nose, right? You were smelling <laughs> it with your you were smelling it with your spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I would go. Right, okay. So has that moved the needle beyond four yeah, blocks for you? I would I would go to the next town over oh. to smell that alleyway. I'm not hmm. leaving my province or state, but okay. I would go one town over for that. That sounds pretty good. But what I, I mean, would you, you're also a person who doesn't like going downstairs, so I feel like that's pretty good. <laughs> well, no, 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 not necessarily. I'm I'm open to it. I just need an experience <laughs> that moves me. That sounds moving. I could go there. Once the stairs also you're you're like creating an additional hurdle once i get past the stairs i'm willing to go wherever it's just this as you need to convince me blocks. to go through the stairs no i'll go i'll go way beyond that but what got it changed what i had never considered and this is what was so fucking funny i don't remember what it was called but eric was showing jeff what these it was like a type of long dog it was a dog breed <laughs> that is so weird especially oh, eric loves those the, he's a big fan of the long dogs and it turned into a conversation of like what if your point of reference for animals was was very simplistic and being <laughs> like seeing a giraffe and being like you would not believe the fucking dog i saw you would, not, so believe the, you would long. not believe the neck on this so horse <laughs> i would travel the globe if somebody described to me an animal that they encountered that i could see if they were like you will not believe this fucking <laughs> horse and it's a giraffe i'm all in about that that moves me that yeah I'll that's travel what it, wherever for that that's what it was. Eric just tried to describe like how to describe an elephant to somebody who's never heard of or seen an elephant before. And you're like, no, trust me. It's as big as a house. It's yeah. as big. And it's, it's <laughs> nose touches the ground and its mm -hmm. ears. Its ears are like its ears are the size of three men standing next to each other. And you'd be like, you're fucking crazy. That doesn't exist. Andrew, how far would you travel for to see a, a chair? It was an animal that looked exactly like a wooden chair. Imagine like the first, the cheapest chair in The Sims, but it was like a sentient creature. How would you, how far would you go to see that? <laughs> Walking around, I'm, eating. Oh, I'm, I'm, we're going on a boat. I don't care You're if we got to cross the that? globe. I'm getting on a boat for that. I will go to a different part of the world to see <laughs> the chair animal. A hundred percent. I will be so that. mad. The entire time I'm on the boat, I'll be like, Jim better not have fucking lied about what this animal is. I'm going to be so goddamn mad. I make it to Ireland, and there's no goddamn chair animals. Well, I think that the fear we had on that office day morning that what we were creating was content uh, was founded, because this was clearly content. Uh, about, I went, we, we just say like a half an hour into the thing, we decided just to record uh, what we were talking about. And, and kind of in the spirit of uh, Eric's, Eric's job, supplemental, supplemental yeah. that we made where it was just Eric trying to schedule us for 26 minutes. So we recorded about an hour and 15 minutes of us just like office talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we called it, uh, we decided that like, this is either going to be episode, the next episode of Fuckface, or it's going to be its own show. Uh, I think it was different enough to be its own show. But yeah. we, uh, we described it as like a peer behind the veil or like uh, getting to see how the sausage is made. And then Gavin didn't understand that reference. So it became sausage talk. <laughs> and so I think we've got a new show coming out at some point called Sausage Talk that's just us talking about like I guess the behind the scenes shit of space. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing cuz I don't think it was necessarily all that funny, but I think it's an interesting yeah. maybe insight into It's also <laughs> the very first production meeting we've ever had for face anything. Yes. So it's kind of fun that that was recorded. We didn't want it to be an episode of face just cuz we got the disadvantage of we're all in the same room except for Andrew. Yeah, I remember going home from that and remembering the name Sausage Talk, and I was trying, to, I was trying to remember the <laughs> phrase that it came from because I kept forgetting it. And I was like, "What was it? Was it like peak behind the sausage?" I just couldn't remember. <laughs> no. I was like trying to apply sausage to all these. <laughs> like you'd have to move a sausage to see what was under. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I don't know when it's coming out. It may already be out. Uh, it may be out before this episode. That's actually I don't a great know. point. Yeah. But there is supplemental content either that just hit or that's coming called Sausage Talk. I guess we'll record one every Office Day, so once a month. So there'll be 12 of those a year. Unless we're using Office Day for something like the pizza video or... Or MVP hitting baseballs or, or whatever. Or hitting baseball. Yeah. Or, 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 like, or MVP, which is coming, I think, next week. Actually, Oh, no, it's not because... Nope. Yeah. Well, it was meant to be. Sure. It was meant to be tomorrow, but then we realized that big Uno stream is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, also, uh, we promised 
uh, at some point in in face that y'all would do a like your recap of your experience of Survive Block Island together. And so after we filmed Sausage Talk episode one, volume <laughs> one, year one, we filmed uh, w- w- that. And I, I'll say no more about that other than it was, I think it went was about that, 45 minutes. Was that interesting at all? Because I felt very in my own head about that. I wasn't sure if I was clear at all. I felt I think very so. convoluted that day. No, no, I think it is. And I think Eric felt it was very interesting. And I think, because I asked him the same question, uh, because you and I, like the three of us were like involved in the production. So we were pretty in the weeds with it. And you, it's kind of hard to have perspective sometimes. We were pretty, we were deep in the sausage. (laughs) We were, we were, we were knee deep in the sausage weeds. And uh, Eric assured me that it was pretty good. I I do think that we wrapped it up at about the right time. I I do feel like it, it, if if it had gone on much longer, it would have, it would have started to drag. I feel like it is one of the few things we've made as this face team where it wouldn't stand alone as a piece of content. Like you actually need to have seen Survive Block Island, I think. And if you, not- if you listen to it, every, every second of that series will be spoiled. So make yes. sure you watch it first, if you have any interest in watching it. Yeah, I only have out. one regret from that recording. There's one thing I, I should have brought up that I, I completely forgot about, but maybe we'll talk about that later. We'll talk yeah. about it next sausage. You could, do an, you could do an add-on, a little pickup. Nah, I don't think it's worth, it's like a weird, it's weird that we didn't mention it, but not worth it being an add-on. I'll talk oh. to you about it after we record. All right. All right. Uh, speaking of, should we stop? Yeah, I guess we should wrap up. This is fun. This is a really relaxed, nice hour. It was really great catching up with the two of you. It was it. Well. Eric got off lightly by not being here because, uh, unfortunately, especially <laughs> didn't want it to happen. <laughs> Extra medium was going to come up again based on some stuff I've read in the comments of this podcast. So thanks to all the comment leavers who have filled me in over something he was saying on Face Jam, and we will be taking that up with him <laughs> during the next recording. I have, dude, I'm excited because I have no I, idea what it is, I, I but I either. do know that Eric is fucking over the extra medium talk, which only, <laughs> only makes me want to dive deeper into it. Oh, it's so good. And uh, I guess this will be the last one of these we record for, because we're not doing next week, right? But we'll do the following week? Yeah. I believe that's correct. And we'll probably All right, do well, two, I imagine. I yep. assume so. Uh, love you both dearly. Uh, Gavin, have a fantastic vacation. Andrew, uh, I hope you uh, don't have to travel <laughs> as far as four blocks if you don't want to. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys uh, next time on Face. Bye. That felt weird. The bye felt weird. That was, was a weird bye. Up. That was a weird bye. Gavin typically goes bye, and then I think to myself, I should say bye, but I never say anything. You said so bye I was trying as to- if you would. Had- you were just sitting down in a lounger. It sounded right. guttural to me. It was it, did. it was, it was, like, it was oh. low. It was guttural. You're right. Uh, that it's was like, just, I'm going to just shut up. It's like, think, what, here's what that buy was. Your dad goes to work all day long. He works in a factory. He comes home. He's no <laughs> yeah. fucking fun at the end of the day. He sits down. He's eating his dinner. And, you're, and his, <laughs> your mom is like, I'm going to go play bingo or with my friends. And he's like, bye. And he like I, raises his hand like, I don't give a fuck. Get out. <laughs> I'm so fucking done with these people and this. Yeah, I, I would apply that to some like uh, remember, Jeff, when we would record an entire Let's Play and then the power go out and we'd lose every single piece of footage <laughs> and then we'd have to yep. sit down again to record it immediately. It was a, it was a buy from that sort of mindset. Yeah. Can, can I try it's it brutal. again? Can I try to do a different uh, a proper Gavin buy? Yeah, let's have a you redemption have a an, okay. in the moment redemption. Why are you making this about me? Because you have a very distinctive buy. I'm going to I'm going to try to you're hit very, it. Okay. By the way, you're very self-conscious this episode, buddy. You're oh, like, to de- <laughs> to boy. <laughs> well, you stepped over Gavin's laugh. Try it again. Bye. Is that a little loud? What, is that I'll, good? I'll be honest. For the of Discord, I'm only hearing. I- yeah, you're cut. You get the beginning is getting cut off. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit and I'm going to immediately trade. Bye. <laughs> well, that now sounds that, like. <laughs> that is bye. like you're, cro- you're crossing the road and a car has like come up the curb yeah. a little bit. And you're like. <laughs> and they're bye. going very fast and all you can hear is. <laughs> I give up. I surrender. Uh, Goodbye. Uh, Stop, dude. Don't do it that way. It's weird. <laughs> it's creeping me out. Bye bye. Bye. Now that was a weird one. Really? Who is? No. And it's fine. Hey guys, Major League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Once again, the guys couldn't be bothered to record an episode, so here are some predictions. The hockey teeth are fixed. Where did we put the tuxedo? Jeff heard himself whacking balls. Gavin isn't here anymore. Hanton is well on his way to half a million. 
Eric is flustered, and once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Fake.